evidence can make all the difference in your asylum case. Having powerful supporting documents that back up what you're claiming in your case can really increase your chances for success. But to help you, your evidence needs to be on point. It needs to be relevant and it also needs to be packaged well. In this video, I'm gonna tell you what kind of evidence you should get in support of your asylum case in the United States. I'm Brian Manning, and I used to be an asylum officer with the government, but now, as an asylum lawyer, well, I help immigrants all over the country to secure their future in America through asylum. All right, let's start by defining evidence. That word means the available body of facts or information indicating whether a belief or proposition is true or valid. That's kind of confusing, a lot of jargon. So let me explain. Basically, evidence is information that helps us decide whether to believe something that is being presented as a fact or a theory. And in the asylum context, it's facts that either back up or contradict something that you're saying about your case. So for example, if you're saying that you've been harmed in your country, do you have proof of that? Are there documents or perhaps witness statements that back up that claim that tend to indicate that, well, yes, this thing must have really happened because in addition to the asylum applicant saying that it happened, well, there's other stuff that supports it and indicates that it happened. To be clear, what you say at your asylum interview or immigration court hearing is definitely the most important part of your case. But having so-called corroborating evidence can really help to persuade the decision maker. It can convince them that you're telling the truth. By the way, if you wanna maximize your chances for asylum success, then be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so that you don't miss the insights that I share on this channel. Now, how do you decide what incidents or aspects of your case you should try to get evidence for? Well, I recommend that you take the final version of the declaration that you're using for your case and examine it very carefully and then list out every incident of harm or any threats against you and then ask yourself, is there a document that I could get that shows that this thing happened? Is there someone who witnessed it and who could write a letter about it? If you've sought medical treatment for harm that you have experienced, then try to obtain documentary evidence about it, such as doctor's notes or hospital receipts. Photos of injuries from an attack can also be included as evidence, and threatening messages via text or social media are relevant and they should be included in your evidence. But evidence isn't helpful just for past incidents of harm and threats. It's also helpful for showing that you possess a protected characteristic under US asylum law, and for showing that this is the reason that the bad guys are targeting you for harm. For example, if you're a member of a political party or a social organization that has been targeted in your home country, then provide evidence of your membership and any relevant documentation that shows your active participation. This could include things like membership cards or photos from meetings or events or correspondence with other members, or maybe even news articles mentioning your involvement. Another example, this time for an asylum case based on religion. An Iranian who has converted from Islam should provide evidence of their conversion and their faith journey. And they should look for documents, messages, and photos that indicate their adherence to the new religion. The same applies to so-called sexual minorities, which is kind of a weird term that USCIS uses to refer to anyone who is not heterosexual. Though it may be uncomfortable, you do need to convince the officer of your status as a sexual minority, and you should try to gather relevant evidence. All right, we've talked about providing evidence to back up claims of harm and threats, and to demonstrate that you possess protected ground or protected characteristic that is putting you at risk of persecution. Now, what else should you try to get evidence for? Well, if you've suffered psychological harm as a result of persecution, then you can provide documentation from a mental health professional outlining the effects of the trauma on your mental or physical health. The mental health professional should detail the symptoms that you've experienced and the treatment that you've received and any ongoing care that you may require. Now, this kind of evidence will show the adjudicator, the decision maker, just how bad the harm that you endured really was, which can help you establish that the harm in your case is sufficiently severe to count as persecution, which is a requirement to win asylum based on past harm. Okay. I gave some examples of documentary evidence that can bolster your case, but let's go back to a specific kind of evidence that I've mentioned a few times, but which we've not really unpacked yet. Witness statements. Written statements from witnesses who have personal knowledge of the incidents that you've experienced 
or who have knowledge that you possess a protected ground or that someone wants to harm you can be very valuable. So think about all the assertions that you're making to try to establish your eligibility for asylum and then ask yourself, is there someone who has firsthand knowledge about this thing and who might be willing to write a letter about it for use in my case. For example, if you were detained and threatened, a witness who observed this incident, well, they could provide a letter detailing their observations. This letter should focus on specific events and facts based on the witness's personal knowledge rather than assumptions or hearsay. It is crucial that witness letters remain focused on the incidents in question and provide as much detail as possible. A witness letter should start out with an explanation of how the person knows you and how it is that they learned about whatever it is that they're talking about for your case. They can't just say, oh, well, uh, Miguel got attacked. Rather, they need to say how they know that Miguel was attacked. Were they there and did they personally see it or did they perhaps learn about it from Miguel immediately after it happened with Miguel appearing distraught and bleeding profusely from fresh wounds as he stumbled home? Whatever the case, the letter needs to explain how the writer learned of the information that they're relating through the letter and it needs to be detailed. Yet, it also needs to be concise, ideally limited to a single page. The witness should state their full name and address and include a PDF copy of their passport data page. The letter should be signed and dated. Note that witness letters do not need to be notarized. Witnesses can email you a PDF version of their letter, but it should be a scanned copy of the original document with a wet ink signature. This means that the witness signed the letter with an ink pen and then scanned the page containing the signature, creating a PDF that they can email to you. If you receive any evidence by post, by physical mail, then keep the envelope or packaging and bring it to your asylum interview or immigration court hearing. Asylum officers, lawyers for the government, and judges in immigration court may request to see the envelope in which a piece of evidence was received. When you send in evidence, send in copies, but take with you the originals whenever you have them. That goes for all evidence, not just witness statements. If you cannot get an original, then be prepared to explain why. Always submit translations of documents that are not in English. The translations should be performed by a competent translator and include a translator's certification. Now, professional translators with experience in immigration cases should know how to do this in a way that meets the US government's standards. I highly recommend that you use a professional translator. A bad translation can really mess up your case. Now, the way in which you organize and present evidence for your asylum case is very important, but it's beyond the scope of this video. If you want to learn about that and get much more detail on how to compile a submission for the asylum office or judge that will make them love you and love your case, then check out the full length training that I'm going to link to in the description of the video that you're watching right now. It's really going to help you present the strongest asylum case possible. If you're ready to take the next step and get help with your asylum case, then please call my office today. The number is 713-352-1593. And remember, we help people all over the country, so it doesn't matter where you are. Call us now to schedule an asylum strategy session so that we can help you secure your future in America through asylum. Again, I'm Brian Manning, and it's an honor to serve you in your asylum journey.